Vari Shesha. We will sing Vibha Vari Shesha. Vibha Vari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Vibha Vari Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Vibhavari Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari. Huh? What happened? <laughs> Hare Krishna. How are you, Mara? Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Nice to see you. Same Hare Krishna. Vibhavari Shesha Loka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva. Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Kriva Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Kriva Nasim Havamana Shri Madhusudana Prajendra Nandana Shama Nasim Havamana Shri Madhusudana Prajendra Nandana Shama Bhutana Gatana Kaita Bhashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Bhutana Gatana Kaita Bhashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda do la la govinda gopala vrindavana purandhara Yashoda do la la govinda gopala vrindavana purandhara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhavana Sundara Pora Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhavana Sundara Pora Ravana Thakura Makana Thaskara Gopi Priyaj 
Gopi Priya, Gopi Jana Vastrahari. Ravana Thakura Makana Thaskara Gopi Jana Vastrahari Brajera Rakala Gopa Vrindapala Chitta Hari Vamsita Hari Rajera Rakala Gopa Vrindapala Chitta Hari Vamsita Hari Yogindra Bandhana Srinandanandhana Prachachana Bhaya Hari Yogindra Bandhana Srinandanandhana Prachachana Bhaya Hari Nabina Niradha Rupa Manohara Mohana Vamsi Bihari Nabina Niradha Rupa Manohara Mohana Vamsi Bihari Yashoda Nandana Kamsa Nishudana Nikunja Rasa Vilasi Yashoda Nandana Kamsa Nishudana Nikunja Rasa Vilasi Kadamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipi Nani Vasi Kadamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipi Nani Vasi Ananda Vardana Prima Niketana Pulashara Yojaka Kama Ananda Vardana Prima Niketana Pulashara Yojaka Kama Gopanga Nagana Chitta Vinodana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma Gopanga Nagana Chitta Vinodana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma
Yamuna Jeevana Kele Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Yamuna Jeevana Kele Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashuda Ras Ko Krishna Yash Rako Vachana Mana Mora Namashuda Ras Ko Krishna Yash Rako Vachana Mana Mora Vibhavari Shaisha Loka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Vibhavari Shaisha Loka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Murari Rama Krishna Haya Kriva Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Murari Rama Krishna Haya Kriva Nittai Gaur Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Nittai Gaur Hari Bo. Jai Jai Prabhupada, 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 Jai Srila Prabhupada. Kaur Premanande Haribo Do you put the verse on the board? Is it on the board? Yeah? Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Praeshu Vapadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 1, The Activities of Maharaj Priyavrata, text number 39. Tasya Hava Ete Sloka Tashya Hava Ikte Sloka 
Priya Vrata Kritam Karma Priya Vrata Kritam Karma Kono Kuryad Vineshvaram Kono Kuryad Vineshvaram Yo nami nim ner akarach Yo nami nim ner akarach Chayam chayam ganam saptavantim Chayam ganam saptavad vandim Dasya hava ite shloka Priya vrata kritam karma Kono kuryad vineshvaram Yonami nimner akarach Chayam nanam sapta varedim Dasya hava ite shloka Priya vrata kritam karma Kono kuryad vineshvaram Yonem ni namner akaroch Chayam gana sapta varidim
You missed a bit. You didn't read the whole translation. Well, in the book, there's a whole verse. There's a whole... You don't have the, the same as in the book. It can... There are many verses regarding Maharaj Priyavrata uh, activities. And then it goes on, No one but the Supreme Personality of Godhead could do what Maharaj Priyavrata has done. Maharaj Priyavrata dissipated the darkness of night and with the rims of his great chariot he excavated seven oceans. Huh? Huh? No, that's the verse. That's the translation. Not the purpose. Huh? Read the purport then. There are many excellent verses, famous all over the world, concerning the activities of Maharaja Priyavarta. He is so celebrated that his activities are compared to those of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sometimes a sincere servant and devotee of, Lord, of the Lord is also called Bhagavan. Sri Narata is called Bhagavan and Lord Shiva and Vyasadeva are also sometimes called Bhagavan. This destination, Bhagavan, is sometimes, sometimes conferred upon a pure devotee by the grace of the Lord, so that he will be very highly esteemed. Maharaja Priyavrata was such a devotee. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnavibhyo namo nama jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadha shri vasa de gor bhaktavinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Maharaj Priyavrata was one of the sons of Swayambhuvamanu. Swayambhuvamanu had two sons, Uttanapad and Priyavrat. So Priyavrat, we heard about his activities in this chapter, how he had gone off with Narada Muni and he was with Narada Muni doing meditation and austerities and penances and it happened that 
That's why Ambu Vamanu wanted to retire and there was nobody to take the throne. And so he, they came to get Priyavrata to come back because Priyavrata was living in the mountains with Narada Muni. Narada Muni, of course, is Brahmachari and Priyavrata was with him and the two of them, they were doing very nice spiritual practice. But Swayambhuvamanu came there and he wanted to take Priyavrata back home to become the king, to take his th position because Swayambhuvamanu wanted to retire and do vanaprastha and prepare for the next life. So just like sometimes people become devotees and sometimes the parents, no, no, I don't want my son to be a devotee. No, he's going to be a doctor. No, he's going to be a, an engineer or this or that. Sometimes the parents, they don't want their son to be a devotee. And so it seemed like that, that Swayambhuvamanu had come to Narada Muni and telling Priyavrata, you know, you're my son, you have to come home, you have to take up your responsibilities, your material duties. So naturally Narada Muni was not inclined to let Priyavrata go because Priyavrata was associating with Narada Muni, the two of them were together and they were a good team. And so, you know, Brahmachari likes some company, you know, they don't like to always just be alone. So they had, he had company. Narada Muni was in, having a nice company with Priyavrat. Didn't want him to go. But then Lord Brahma came. And Lord Brahma mediated the dispute. And Lord Brahma explained that actually you have to go back. That this is important that somebody has to be there, you have to take the throne, you have to rule. But don't worry, even though you may get married and have a family and so on, you won't fall down. You will always be protected. And so that was the guarantee that was given to Priyavrata, that he would remain in good consciousness. And so it happened, he went, he went back and he became the emperor, took over the Swayambhuvamanu's position and he did many wonderful things. Wonderful things in this, as it was described here, that he was driving his chariot behind the sun planet, behind the, behind the sun god, the wheel of time. You know, the, the sun god is described in the Brahma Samhita, Yakchakshur Esha Savita Sakala Grahanam Raja Samasta Sura Murtir Ashecha Teja Yashyagnai Brahmati Sakala Chakro Govindam Adipursam Tamaham Bajamin that the, the sun god is mounting the wheel of time, the Kala Chakra. As the sun rotates, it's mounting the wheel of time, reducing the duration of life. As the sun rises and sets, it's reducing the, the duration of all of our lives. Everyone's life is being reduced as the sun is traveling. Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki. So the sun is rotating the wheel of time, the Kala Chakra, reducing the duration of life. And Priyavrata was following that. Uh, chariot of the sun god. The Priyavrata was so powerful. We, can, you should, we should understand, of course, he's not like an ordinary person. He's a very uh, great personality. And so it's described here that he was, his activities compared to the supreme personality of Godhead. You know, who could compare to the supreme personality of Godhead? That is very exceptional. But that was the position of Priyavrat. Therefore, he is described to be like Bhagavan. And Prabhupada, in his purport, he mentions how sometimes other people are also described as Bhagavan. 
in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is addressed as Bhagavan. But Arjuna, uh, it's Arjuna Uvacha, Dhritarashtra Uvacha, Sanjay Uvacha. But when Lord Krishna speaks, it's Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. So Lord Krishna is Bhagavan, but other people are often also called as Bhagavan. And Lord Shiva is sometimes called as Bhagavan because Lord Shiva performs also very greatly powerful activities. And Lord Shiva is also a very dear associate of Lord Krishna. Not that they're envious of each other or competing with each other, but they have great respect for each other. Lord Krishna gave the benediction to Lord Shiva that his temples would be more than Krishna's. And certainly it's true that there's so many temples of Lord Shiva. And even you go in the Holy Dham, you go in Mayapur, or you go around Braja, and everywhere you'll find temples of Lord Shiva. We don't find so many temples of Lord Krishna, but you find a lot of temples of Lord Shiva. And that benediction was given by Lord Krishna himself. So Lord Krishna uh, has a nice relationship, even though they did fight even though they did fight with each other, but that was a special situation. That was because of uh, Banasur, that Banasur had taken the benediction from Lord Shiva. Well, Lord Shiva had offered anyway a benediction to Banasur. So Banasur asked Lord Shiva that you come and stay here in my kingdom. And if anybody ever attacks me, I want you to help be on my side. And so it happened, of course. It happened. The unexpected always happens. The things we don't expect, they happen. The things we want, they don't happen. That's the nature of the material world. So Banasura had a daughter, Usha, and although he was keeping her in privacy, he was keeping, a, a, keeping her away from all the lusty men. But still, somehow it happened that she had a dream. Well, and that, that was also predicted, that was predicted by Lord Shiva's wife, Parvati. Because it happened, Banasura's daughter, Usha, that one day she happened to see Lord Shiva with his wife. Because Lord Shiva had come to live in the kingdom of Banasura. He was living in the palace with Banasura. So he had his wife with him. And so it happened that Usha was a young, young girl, young woman, and she happened to see Parvati with her husband. And they were having some love game or something. But the young girl, Usha, she saw Parvati like this and she was thinking, Oh, I would also like, like to do like that. And Parvati could understand the mind of Usha. And he, she told Usha that in the future, there will be a man who will satisfy your desire. And so it happened that in course of time, oh well, actually, first of all, Usha asked, when will that happen? And Parvati told her, she told her that she did, that the one man will appear in your dream and that man will become your husband. And so it happened one night, Usha had a dream and it was, Parvati had told her it would be on the Dwadasi, the Shukla Dwadasi in the month of Vishak. Month of Vishak. That's when Janmastami is, I think, in that month. And so on the Shukla Dwadasi, the bright Dwadasi, the day after Ikadasi, she had a dream and she woke up and the girl who was with her could understand that she was dreaming about some man. And so the young lady asked her, who are you dreaming about? And she said, I don't know the name of the man, but I could recognize him. And so the, the lady, the girl who was with Usha, 
was called Chitraleka and she had some very special yoga powers. Some people say she is actually Yoga Maya. So she began to draw pictures of different men and she drew pictures of demigods and then she drew pictures of Gandharvas and pictures of Vijadharas and different men in different regions of the universe and then she came to the human beings and she drew pictures of people in the Vrishni dynasty and she drew Ugrasena and then she drew Lord Krishna and then she drew Prajumna now Prajumna he was uh, she understood the girl understood this is the father of the man who I dreamt about this was her she said this will be my father-in-law so Prajumna was the father of Anirudh and so she drew Prajumna's son Anirudh and then Usha admitted she bowed her head and she blushed and said yes this was the man I was dreaming about so Chitraleka had yoga powers and she said no problem I'll go and bring him for you and by her yoga powers she flew off to Dwarka but when she got to Dwarka Dwarka was protected there's you know Lord Krishna was residing in Dwarka and he didn't allow just anyone and everyone to come in there and so uh, Chitraleka got to Dwarka but she wasn't able to enter however at that time Narada Muni came there and Narada Muni taught her how she could enter into Dwarka and so she entered into Dwarka and she got into the palace and she found Anirudh because she'd drawn his picture she could recognize him so she found Aniruddha laying sleeping on a bed and by her yoga powers she picked up the bed and she brought the, the Aniruddha all the way back to the place where this other girl Usha was staying so in this way Usha got her husband you see although Aniruddha had other wives as well you know but <laughs> he's got a new wife so Anirudh is the grandson of Lord Krishna but when Banasura found out that his daughter was with this man her father was furious that he was trying to protect his daughter from being corrupted by some lusty man and now he sees his daughter is with this man so Banasura comes with an army and they, they want to arrest Anirudh. And Anirudh's a Maharati, he's a great warrior. So he fought with them and he killed several of them. But Banasura had, had a, a Pashunaga. He used his Pashunaga to tie up Anirudha and they took him a prisoner. So when he was taken prisoner, then he was kept in the prison and, and the girl of course Usha she's heartbroken that her husband is taken from her what to do anyway father wouldn't hear anything about it but then the time went on the four months of the rainy season passed and Aniruddha had disappeared and nobody knew where he was so it had been a long time the whole Chaturmasya passed nobody knew where he'd gone so then Narada Muni came and he told Lord Krishna how he's been taken a prisoner so Lord Krishna immediately orders get the army and they all come and Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram lead the army and they come to attack the place where Banasura is living and Banasura has got Lord Shiva there to protect him so in this way there's a great battle between Shiva and Lord Krishna and Lord Shiva had his son there also Kartikeya was also there so Kartikeya is the son of Lord Shiva and he's fighting the son of Lord Krishna Prajumna Prajumna fights with Kartikeya Lord Shiva fights with Lord Krishna and Banasura fights with uh, with the Sadyaki and then it's a great battle 
all, all the different demigods, they all come to watch. And it's a wonderful battle. And uh, Banasura, of course, is, uh, his army is going to get in a lot of trouble. They're easily defeated by the army of Lord Krishna. Kartikeya is also Murga, your Murga, Kartikeya. He was defeated by Prajumna. He had to go, he went running away on his peacock. Right? Murga has a peacock. And so they went running away out of fear of Prajumna. And then also Lord Krishna used one weapon, the yawning weapon. You know the yawning weapon? We have the yawning weapon in ISKCON. We call it Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Right? When we say that, everybody goes, ah, ah. <laughs> It's uh, the yawning weapon. <laughs> so Krishna used his yawning weapon. And Lord Shiva went to sleep. <laughs> but then he came back. After some time he came back because they were, they were, his army was being, Lord Shiva's army was being defeated. So he had his Shiva Dwara weapon. He released the Shiva Dwara weapon which burns everything. So Lord Krishna had his weapon, the, the Vishnu Dwara. Vishnu Dwara, the Vishnu fever. And the Vishnu fever is to freeze everything make everything very cold. They say at the time of death, the body gets very hot and then it will get very cold. And then you die. <laughs> and so, like that, there's the Vishnu Dwara and the Shiva Dwara. They're fighting. The Shiva Dwara was burning everything and it came towards Lord Krishna to try to burn Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna releases the Vishnu Dwara and the Vishnu Dwara froze everything. So when the, 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 the cold of the Sh Vishnu Dwara came to the Shiva Dwara, then Shiva Dwara was in trouble and he took shelter of Lord Krishna and he came and offered prayers to Lord Krishna and begged protection. So Lord Krishna told him, all right, won't harm you, go away, <laughs> don't trouble us anymore. In this way, uh, the Shiva Dwara was defeated by the Vishnu Dwara. And then Banasura comes, and Banasura, this, the father of this girl, he had 1,000 arms. He was very powerful. With 1,000 arms, he, he was playing different instruments for Lord Shiva. When they would have kirtan, he would play many different instruments, especially the drum. If you have a thousand arms, then you can beat them, you know, you can do a lot of madanga beating. So Lord Shiva was very happy with him for this. And that's why he gave the benediction to Banasura that he would come and stay with him because he played the Madanga so nicely, Lord Shiva likes to dance. So when the Madanga playing is very good, then you, you're inspired to dance and to join in the Kirtan. So Banasura did this for Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva was happy with him and gave him the benediction. But Banasura he had a thousand arms and because he had a thousand arms he'd become very proud. And we say pride comes before the fall. We shouldn't be proud. We're warned, don't be proud of anything. Remember, we're very fallen souls. We're all fallen souls and we should always remain humble and be insignificant devotees and servants of Lord Krishna. So, Bana had become very proud because he had 1,000 arms. Nobody could defeat him. He was so strong, he would go to mountains and he would smash mountains to pieces. And one day he even told Lord Shiva, 
He even told Lord Shiva, he said, I think you're the only one who could give me a good fight. And Lord Shiva was thinking to kill him. But then Lord Shiva thought, well, he's my follower. If I kill him, it won't be very good because he's one of my followers. But anyway, Lord Shiva told him, in the future, somebody's going to come and he will take away your pride. He will help you to become humble. And so it happened that when Lord Krishna was fighting, Lord Krishna saw Banasura. Banasura came on the battlefield with his 1,000 arms. And at one point he had 500 bows. 500 bows and two arrows on each bow. And Lord Krishna came and cut all the bows, broke them all to pieces. So then Banasura came back with weapons, different weapons in each of his hands. He had so many different weapons in his 1,000 arms. So what did Lord Krishna do? He began to cut off his arms. Then he cut off his arms and when he was cutting off the arms, at that time Lord Shiva came and he prayed to Lord Krishna that uh, you are the Supreme Lord. He said, you are helping to take away the pride of this person, Banasura. But this Banasura, he is my follower. So he's also born in the family of Prahlad Maharaj. So please spare him. Please don't kill him. So Lord Krishna told Lord Shiva, he said, yeah, I'm not going to kill him. I'm just going to cut off most of his arms, I'll leave him with four arms. He can be left with four arms and he will be one of your associates. And he won't, he doesn't have to be, a, he doesn't have to worry about old age or death. He can be with you, he'll have no fear. And he can be one of your associates. And because he's born in the family of Prahlad Maharaj, certainly I, w I won't kill him because I promised Prahlad that none of his descendants would be killed. So this Banasura went to be with Lord Shiva. And so this shows the intimate dealing between Lord Shiva and Lord Krishna, that even though Lord Shiva was fighting against Lord Krishna, Still, Lord, Shiva, Lord Krishna understands that Lord Shiva is his devotee. He's a Vaishnava. We say Vaishnavam Yata Shambhu. Of all the Vaishnavas, Shambhu is the greatest Vaishnava. And Lord Krishna knows this. He knows the position of Lord Shiva. He understands his mood. And so they have intimate relationship. So Lord Shiva, he helps in both not only destruction but Lord Shiva is also in, uh, involved in creation and in maintenance. At the time of the creation Lord Shiva will carry the glance of the living entities. Mahavishnu will impregnate the living entities into the Pradhan and that glance is carried by Lord Shiva. He impregnates the living entities into the material nature. And during the maintenance, Lord Shiva also acts. Sometimes demons will come and Lord Shiva will kill them. Lord Shiva will take on that work to relieve the burden of some demonic persons who are on the planet. And of course, at the time of the annihilation or devastation of the universe, Lord Shiva is also involved. So Lord Shiva is very active in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he is Bhagavan. He is one with Krishna and at the same time different from him. In the Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma describes Sri Ramyata Shri, Shri Ram Yadi Yata Vadi, how does it go? Shri Ram Yadi Yata Vadi, 
विशेषयोगसंजाते नी तथा प्रीकदस्ते हेतु यदा समपैति कर्यत गोविंद मदिपुरशम थम जस्ट इस मिल्क कैन बी ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू खर्च और योगर्ट बाय द एक्शन ऑफ एसिड्स सो इन द सेम वे लॉर्ड विष्णु बिकम्स लॉर्ड शिवा so lord vishnu bikan can become shiva but lord shiva never becomes vishnu the example is very appropriate because once you make curds you cannot turn it back to milk and the same way lord shiva never becomes vishnu but they're one in this and that sense that they're they're um the supreme personality of god and their god therefore lord shiva is also known as bhagavan and similarly shrila vyasa dev is also sometimes described as bhagavan now shrila vyasa dev is jiva tatva shakta vesha tatva he's empowered personality he's empowered to write books to write the vedas and to write the puranas and to write mahabharat and to write vedanta sutra all of these things were done by shrila vyasa dev therefore we offer our obeisances to shrila vyasa dev and we also describe him as bhagavan and sometimes narada muni is also described as bhagavan although he is uh, an ordinary person but he's performing great activities on behalf of the lord narada was one of the sons of lord brahma but he's empowered with devotion and he's going everywhere preaching and di distributing krishna consciousness so in this way priyavrat is also described as bhagavan because of his wonderful qualities almost on the level of the supreme personality of godhead this chaitanya mahaprabhu says achintya beda beda tatva inconceivably simultaneously one with god at the same time different from god so this is the position of priyavrat being described in this verse today any questions comments this time um sita prabhupa mentioned before i think that uh the regards to lord shiva the devotees lord the devotees of lord shiva will be Wealthy compared to the devotees of Lord Krishna, the uh, the poor, is that correct? Yes, that's described in uh, in tenth canto Shrimad Bhagavatam, described like that. And that the, devo the devotees of Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu generally they're poor; they're not wealthy. the devotees of lord vishnu or lord krishna are generally not wealthy although lord krishna and lord vishnu they're very wealthy they're you know the goddess uh, lakshmi narayan so lord narayan is with lakshmi the goddess of fortune and they live in dwarka they're f everywhere is opulent everything is so opulent but generally the devotees are not so opulent but the followers of lord shiva they worship lord shiva lord shiva himself is very renounced he doesn't even have a house he lives with his wife under a tree and uh they're you know they're quite detached from everything but the followers of lord shiva themselves they enjoy opulence they get opulence often they have that kind of desire 
They want material sense gratification. Often they're devoted to Lord Shiva simply for that purpose that they want to enjoy the material world. You could say because Lord Shiva's consort is Mother Durga. So Mother Durga controls the material nature. So when she sees people devoted to her husband, so she blesses them with opulence. So you may say, well why didn't, when we're devoted to Lord Krishna, shouldn't uh, Lakshmi bless the devotees of Krishna? Well no, because Brigamuni kicked Brigamuni kicked Lord Vishnu in the chest. So she cursed. Lakshmi cursed all the Brahmanas will be poor. And because Brigamuni kicked Lord Vishnu in the chest, he didn't show proper respect for Lord Vishnu. So we never get the blessings of Lakshmi. Well that's one but on the other hand you have to understand that while we may not be blessed with material opulence, there's a special opulence which we have, which the followers of Lord Shiva don't have. And that is peace of mind. That the people who generally worship Lord Shiva are very passionate and angry and proud and intoxicated and arrogant, and very you know, nasty, not easy people to be with, difficult people to work with. But the devotees of Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, they're, they have peace of mind, they're satisfied with whatever is arranged by the grace of God, they're not anxious to improve their material condition, they simply accept whatever is provided by the grace of the Lord and use it for the service of the Lord. So in this way the devotees of Lord Krishna and Lord Vishnu, they enjoy the greatest opulence, that they're peaceful and happy in their life. But the followers of Lord Shiva, they don't have that. Right? So what do you want? Do you want to be a, you want the blessings of Lord Shiva or do you want the blessings of Lord Krishna? With regards to yesterday's class, connected to today's class, yesterday you mentioned that if you pray to Krishna, he will give you whatever you want. So, but then again we heard, we hear that uh, Lord Krishna, the devotees are generally, they don't get what they want. Well, he will consider first, Lord Krishna is going to consider what do you want? He will consider is it actually good for us or not? He will consider, if it's actually good for us, then you will get it. Then, but if he considers it's not very good for you, then he won't give it to you. And so everything is decided ultimately by Lord Krishna. You, what you, you, we may want things which are just troublesome to us. So Lord Krishna, he thinks about what's actually good for our devotional service and he will arrange that. If we want something, we, we may want something, we may want something which is really not good for our devotional service. And so Lord Krishna will purify us so that we come to understand that this is really not very good for my devotional service. As we get purified, we'll really, we'll understand what is good and what is not good for us. Krishna gives us that knowledge from the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki gore premanande.